My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into, into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church, and since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid of the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram. I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel, he brought the letter which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garment and exclaimed, Am I a God with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see, he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and it would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the, Parf, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst, thirst is, is my soul for the living God. God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity, that they shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. 
when shall I go and behold the face of God? Then, I will go, then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you that there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we hear from the story which is when Jesus goes back to his town of Nazareth. We know this is his hometown, and he's preaching there. And we hear in other places where he was unable to work miracles for their lack of faith in that town. And here this is a different story we hear him where the people become mad because he points out that just because these people are God's people or just because this prophet is from this town, does not mean that the miracles will be worked there. It does not mean that there is a privileged place then for that prophet to work these things. But that he is one who is in the service of the Lord and that God is always seeking to work these miracles in greater and more profound ways. And so they become angry because there's, there's that jealousy there. And we see in this story from our first reading today in the second book of Kings, that what he's drawing on. And we're very, perhaps very familiar with that story of Elijah, which our Lord references first when they send the, the three-year famine and Elijah goes to the widow and he says, make me a cake. And she says, I'll do so, but then me and my son will die because that is the last food that we have. And then he tells them that your, your grain and your oil will not run out as long as I am with you. And sure enough, they stay there for months, and he is saved. And they're all, the food never runs out, miraculously. And here, too, this is a member of a conquering army who hears the word from just the passing word of one of these girls who was captured, one of the servants. And this is enough, then, that Naaman is willing to make this journey to go and to be healed. And we see, and we can see in this, a bit of our own kind of difficulty. Because for us, all of us are of the church. Many of us grew up in the church. And so similar to the Jewish people who might have been expecting something more, or maybe those people from Jesus' town who were expecting something more, wanting to have their miracles work for them, but yet we hear some of these amazing conversion stories of people, these amazing things that bring people back, and we think, well, why doesn't that happen to me? Why don't these blessings which are here that bring these other people back into the church, these amazing stories, why don't they happen to me? And it could be a bit hard for us. It could be a stumbling block. But similar to that second son we heard about in our reading on Saturday, the prodigal, and that one who remains faithful, it's good to remember that all that we have, or all those beautiful blessings which the Lord works for others, 
that they also are part of us, that these are the things that our Father is doing and we are in his house. And so we can rejoice as new people are brought in, even as we continue to pray for some of those things to happen, but to have the patience that our Lord, what he desires is not so much an abundance of miracles as an abundance of faith. And so if those miracles lead to those faith for others, all the better. But for us who remain close and have seen those small workings of the Lord in our lives, that growth in love and relationship with him, that for that then is what we lean on and what we grow in and how we're able then to then bring others into that relationship. And if the Lord chooses to work a great miracle, all the better. But let our faith not work merely on the miraculous, but on that constant fidelity, which we hear Mother Teresa speak about. Is that our Lord doesn't ask for success, but he asks for faithfulness, and that we can follow in that way. But so too, looking at uh, the story from the second book of Kings with Naaman, we see that what he was looking for was something amazing. He was expecting the grand show of the prophet to do something that was a spectacle. But we see that when he comes, he comes expecting him to come out and pronounce some big words and maybe lightning would strike and he would be healed like that. We see that Elisha doesn't even come outside to meet him. This man comes out with armed guards and chariots and horses and the prophet stays in his house, he says. He says he sends the message out to go, go wash in the river. And so this man who was expecting, who was living in kind of this royal life, was expecting something royal and amazing, that he who was going to be healed would be able to see something. But we see that our Lord works even when he does work a miracle in this humble way. And we see that that is how the Lord chooses to work and how he heals him in that way. And so for us, too, we can learn to be attentive to those small ways and perhaps to be grateful for the miracles and those miraculous things that we are about to partake in in the Mass and that we do have in our midst and that we do often take for granted. We have the forgiveness of our sins, which takes place not with some great animal sacrifice that it took place with in the Old Testament time, but merely with the small whispering that happens in the confessional. We have our Lord who makes, becomes present to us and we receive in bodily form, again, not with flashings of lightning or anything like that as it was on Mount Sinai, but in this way that we can so easily miss in the bread and the wine which become the body and blood of our Lord which we receive. And so too, every time we come to a baptism and pass that font, there is the place where the children of wrath become the children of God, that those who weren't God's children become God's children. And all of these things happen with so little pomp and circumstance, and we become so familiar with them that we can lose the fact that there is something great and amazing here. And perhaps like that servant says to Naaman, that all the more, if he asked you to do something amazing, you would do it that now because it's something simple, we shouldn't scorn that. And that we do have our Lord with us here. And there are so many people out in the world who are lost and wondering where God is, but yet we know where he is. And we are with him every day. And that's something that we can take with an extra degree of gratitude, perhaps today and going forward, realizing that's great gift that we have in our midst. We might not miss it. We now bring our needs and the needs of the world before our merciful Father. For the church, may the Holy Spirit strengthen her in teaching God's law and spirit and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God inspire their creation of policies that follow his commandments, especially that of respect for human dignity and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may the Lord bless us in our Lenten journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may Christ, who died for us, welcome them into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for Joseph Ocello, and for Joseph Blewett, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you love the world so much that you gave us your only Son. With confident hope in your love for us, we ask you to hear these prayers through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure. Said more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John of God, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great. Joining us online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May communion in this, your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. 
May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them and give them instruction that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.